I'm here with Kieran Collins from Chalgus in Cork and we are we're looking at beet crop today and um, we're going to talk about the yields. Kieran, have you seen much changes in uh, in yields in the past years or what's this year's yield like? Yeah, I suppose one I suppose very positive thing about fodder beet is we are getting very consistent yields. I suppose our climate suits fodder beet in Ireland. Um, you know, a uh, lot of farmers now are getting 80 tonnes plus per hectare of fresh weight, giving maybe 12 to 18 tonnes of, of feed per, per dry matter. So I suppose we're getting consistent yields over over a long period of time. So Kieran, have you seen much of a differential in, in area of, of beet? in the last number of years? I think it's been pretty consistent. Um, I suppose traditionally in, in Ireland we had, pre the sugar factory, we had about 30 odd thousand hectares of sugar beet grown. And then you had the surplus get going into the livestock industry. So in recent years we've a very consistent in around 10,000 hectares. And I suppose that's largely grown by, by tillage farmers for sale to livestock farmers. But then you do some livestock farmers that are growing their own beet or maybe growing for grazing as well. So that would be part of the market too. Do you see more of a change towards uh, fodder to sugar in the last number of years? Yeah. Or is it consistent fodder? I think there's a bit of both in the mix and I suppose the crucial thing and I think people are, are very aware of now is the dry matter of the beet and it's essentially the tons of dry matter per hectare that we're getting rather than the fresh weight tons and I think people are you know when they're doing their fodder budgets now that they're looking at dry matter tons and you know some of the high dry matter sugar beet types are giving very good yields per hectare. Kieran, from a rotation um, where do you see beet fitting in and the benefits in a rotation? The benefits to the tillage farmer are huge in the sense that it's a rotational break crop, so a take-all break. And recent research in Chagas done by Dermot Forrestal, albeit an oilseed rape, but would show strong benefits to the following wheat crop. Yields of up to 19% higher versus continuous wheat. So, you know, having that rotational break crop with, with fodder beet is very useful. And it's also an alternative way to control difficult weeds like grass weeds in particular. So it has multiple benefits from a rotational perspective. Kieran, with, with the current price of fertilizer being very high for 2022, do you think that to, for the farmers to protect themselves, do you think it's, it's better that there's a contract put in place before the farmer puts the beet in the ground? For mm, I think there's huge benefits to, to putting a contract in place. And it not alone protects the, the tillage farmer who grows it, but also protects the, um, the livestock farmer as well. Because, you know, the livestock farmer can do their feed budget, they can work out their requirement, they can let the tillage farmer know how many tons they require and the tillage farmer can grow that. And a huge benefit to the tillage farmer is that farmer grows that, that area beet, you know, and they know that they will sell it at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. And I suppose as well the contract is very important because, you know, you can broaden it out, you can include the price, which is very important because security of price, you know, in terms of inputs is very important with high fertiliser prices and that this year. But also you can build into the contract maybe delivery dates or specify a variety, you know, the livestock producer might be looking for maybe a high dry matter variety so we can work out the tonnes per hectare produced and agree a price based on, and on, on dry matter. sugar versus fodder, there mm. might be a differential if a, if a farmer wants sugar beet versus fodder beet might be prepared to pay a little bit extra for it in some yeah, cases. And absolutely and I suppose it's really not about why we can get very high fresh weight tons it's obviously about the tons of dry matter per hectare that we're producing so sometimes the sugar beet varieties will have a big advantage in, in those areas. Kieran, would you think because of a, a rotational point of view when you want to get in a crop of winter wheat early November, October, November time a picking a variety that can bulk earlier might be an option. Yeah, there are certainly huge advantages from the tillage growers' perspective of a variety that would bulk earlier. Uh, ideally, we want to sow that crop of winter wheat in the month of October. So if the beet can be harvested in the month of October or maybe the latest early November, there are huge benefits to that. Once it goes later than that, you know, establishment in the following winter wheat can maybe negate some of the benefits of the rotation. Kieran, in the case of a, a grower on Conacre, um, would you recommend ground lime versus grand lime? Uh, I suppose the first answer piece of the answer to that question is the soil test report. 
I mean, that's crucial to know where our starting point is. Um, if the pH is low, and we need a, a, a pH ideally of 7 for, for fodder beet, if the pH is low, um, we really need ground limestone to, um, to bring up our pH. And especially, you know, if it's very low, it needs probably to go on top of the ploughing at a maximum rate of maybe 7.5 tonnes per hectare. So even if it's conacre ground, uh, the application of lime is certainly justified and does pay for itself in the crop. In terms of pH requirement, uh, ideally the pH would be, soil pH would be 7, so that wouldn't be different whether it's fodder or sugar beets. So you get your soil test report and your target is pH 7. Kieran, thanks a million for this today. It's, uh, it's been an education and I, I hope our viewers find this beneficial. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, don't be afraid to get in contact.